Penny, 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 stop it. Oh, there's a freaking squirrel outside. There's a, okay. Please don't bust through the screen, Penny. Please, please just don't. Penny, the squirrel's fine. Leave the squirrel alone. Nope, nope, nope. Calm down. No. Hi, squirrel. I'm sorry my cat wants to eat you. You're cute though. Hi, I see you. You see my cat? Yeah, she can't get you, I don't think. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifting. This is Mid-Century Wasting. I feel like we're about to be in a thunderstorm. We are. <laughs> go, to the ranch, go to the ranch? Oh, 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 okay. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Look at this lamp. Oh my gosh, that is a really pretty one. Yeah, it's a really cool one. 170. Mm. Not bad. Mm? Not bad. Oh no, there's two. No, man. This thing here. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's for the pair. Oh my god, they're really cool. I mean, they'd have to go in our bedroom. Right. We could sell those though. The ones that we have? Or put those. Uh, put them somewhere. in your record room on the console. Whatever you get on the console behind Maybe. your thing. No options. I don't know how to put them safely. Just take the shades off. And... The shades off and lay them down on top. It's just one day. Yeah. Well, let's, let's think about it. I'm not going to impulse buy two lamps and take them all the way back down to Southern California. <laughs> Although it's, that, is, that, is my, that is my impulse. <laughs> That's a really good price. I thought that for one was a good price. Oh. Uh oh. Are you okay? Storming. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Are we okay? <laughs> Are we okay?
Nobody but home. Can you help me get the tag on, on this? It's a TV lamp. Eighty-five. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, it's like a, it's like a Hager one. Oh yeah. It was enamel? Look like it. Oh yeah, yeah. They are. Inside looks spectacular. Pretty good. Yeah. Is there anything on the bottom? Japan. O T O. Comes with a fifteen hour bowl that goes with it. It's not bad. I don't know about orange though. Uh -huh. I feel like that wouldn't be a very popular color. <laughs> the doll head, you mean? <laughs> oh, it's familiar. It's a good price. Oh, yeah. hmm. I thought you knew well, everything. Well. Old shopping carts really cool. Oh, that's cool. It's not neat. Wow. It's so much metal. <laughs> it's like, so cool. This seemed like over overdone with the amount of like metal that you can see. Oh, the heck's gone. Okay.
Hi guys, welcome back to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie. Thanks for joining me. Today I have a fun little show and tell for you. Uh, you just finished watching, in the first part of this video, a shopping day that my husband Blake and I had when we were on a little getaway to Oregon to visit my family and to kind of escape the spiking virus in Southern California where we live. We quarantined up in Oregon for a little while. While we were there, stores opened back up much sooner than they did down in Southern California. And so we went to them. We went to some antique malls and uh, one Goodwill, we kind of like abandoned ship on that trip. Um, if you missed the other two shopping videos, because there were two other whole entire videos where we were shopping at these antique malls, I will try to put a card wherever the little card thing goes. I'm still learning this whole YouTube business, you guys. Bear with me here. Or just go check out those videos. I'll link them down below. I don't know. You find them. Just go find them. Find them somehow. You're smart. You can do it. You might want to watch those first. If not, just sit tight and watch me talk about the stuff that I got. It's not much. That's why I kind of just tied it together with the last store of shopping in Bend. I didn't get a lot. We shopped for a long time. We were gone like most of the day, but um, I didn't get a whole lot. I thought that I got more items than this. Now I'm looking at this measly little spread in front of me, but it just felt like I got more because there were so many things that I wanted to get. The places that we went were just loaded, loaded with goodies. Uh, the first store we went to was the Redmond Antique Mall in Redmond, Oregon. Really the whole place was just loaded with mid-century modern stuff. A lot of the booths in there had some really amazing things that I wanted, but there was one booth in particular that was all MCM, the entire thing, MCM galore everywhere you looked. And I was definitely losing my mind in that booth a little bit. So I'm gonna show you what I got there. In that one particular booth, you saw me grab these fondue plates. Now this is probably a little beyond the era of mid-century modern. Maybe. There's debate on the exact dates that qualify as mid-century modern, but I consider 70s to be a little past MCM. We're starting to get into some more like disco. Disco is an MCM. I think of fondue as being 70s. Maybe it became popular more in the 60s, but I just think of it as 70s. And I think of that as being like, once fondue started, like mid-century went away. <laughs> we start getting into some crazy, like psychedelic disco stuff. So these are, these are plastic, like Melamine or Melmac, hard plastic plates. There's three of them. They're all the same. They're all orange and they have the little dividers in them. People would put their little stuff that they were gonna dip into the melted cheese or I guess the melted chocolate if you're awesome and you had a chocolate fondue party. You would put your little dippers in there, chunks of bread, your whatever meats. I don't, I don't know, what, what else did they dip in fondue? Me meats and breads? Vegetables, maybe? I know like what you would dip in chocolate. You'd have fruit, you'd have marshmallows, you'd have graham crackers, you'd have all sorts of good stuff. I got these fondue plates, three of them for $11. I just think they're cool. The color is awesome. It's a great color. I love orange. That is one of my favorite colors that I'm drawn to. Um, but at the time, I actually got these because we were up in Oregon staying at my parents' house. I got these for my kids because we didn't really have a lot of divider plates at my parents' house up there. I think we had one at the time. So when I saw these, I initially thought my kids prefer to eat off of divided plates. This is perfect for them. 
and they're plastic, so they're not gonna shatter into a million pieces. My mom ended up going to Walmart and buying a bunch, a big huge set of divided plates for the kids anyway, <laughs> while we were up there. So we didn't even hardly use them. We didn't even hardly need them. Now I have them here at home. I'm gonna wash them up and I'm gonna just add them to our plates because hey, even I occasionally would like a little compartment to put ketchup, little dippers, make sure my peas don't roll into my ketchup. You know, you never know what you're gonna need a divided plate for. God, maybe one day we'll have a fondue party when life is, you know, when you're able to have parties again if that ever happens, if we're ever allowed to have parties again. I don't know. <laughs> there was only one other thing that I got at the Redmond Antique Mall and it was this set of bingo cards. These are just heavy cardboard bingo cards. I don't know if this is from like the bingo board game or like the bingo at home bingo game. Have you seen that? I, I have another, I have a version of that in my stuff but I have been collecting a lot of random ephemera lately either on purpose or on accident because I'm drawn to it I am and I've been getting big lots of things from estate sales and it just seems like ephemera is just always mixed in with big lots of things because people don't know what to really do with it you know it's like you don't want to sell one little piece of paper at a time so I'm kind of putting together a bunch of ephemera and I'm thinking of putting making little ephemera packs for either just people who like sorting through random ephemera or what do they call it junk junk scrapbook junk it's not junk scrapbooking junk journaling junk journaling I don't personally junk journal um, but I do occasionally like to just mix in little paper ephemera things with my decor I thought these, because they are just such heavy duty, hard cardboard. Um, I mean, you could put this in a display very easily, prop one of these things up. So I am going to be putting together some ephemera packs. I think I might sell them on Etsy because I've been seeing ephemera packs on Etsy and they just seem really fun. And I saw some actually at an, one of the antique stores that we went to in a later date. You haven't seen that one yet. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea of something to use all this ephemera for. Just kind of bundle it in like a mixed bag and sell it. And then I was also thinking I could include a little bag of ephemera with every purchase in my Etsy store or on eBay as just like a little thank you for purchase, hopefully get some repeat customers, get people following me. Yeah, and just as a little thank you because I'm gathering up all this stuff and I don't, I mean, I do like certain things, certain little pieces I would love to keep myself, but I don't need all of it. I'm happy to give some of it away. I'm happy to sell some of it. And um, so yeah, that's the plan. Oh, and they're from Parker Brothers. Down at the very bottom here, it says Parker Brothers. So maybe it was from the board game one that they sold for people to play at home. Could be. I don't know if people would actually like dab on these. Like they came with little little markers. I've seen people use like little beans, like dry beans to mark, you know. This was cool because it was a big bundle of the bingo cards and I paid what, $10 for this? $10 for this. That's what I got at store number one. If you watched the shopping video, you saw how much restraint I had to have while I was shopping there. <laughs> Actually, while editing the video, I was screaming at myself. I'm like, why wasn't I buying that? Why didn't I buy that? Why didn't I buy that? Why didn't I buy that? I just kept saying like, why am I not buying these things? And I think at the time I was going into it more from a resale mindset. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I go into an antique store and I have a collector's mindset and I just want to buy a bunch of stuff for myself. <laughs> you know, I had a lot of comments on that video, the shopping video about um, the prices. And I was a little surprised at that. People were saying that it was expensive at that antique store. And when Blake and I were there, we were like, wow, these prices are pretty good. <laughs> so I think it just depends on where you live and what is popular in the area in which you live. 
In Southern California, mid-century modern is super popular, super duper popular right now. And I'm probably always, but very popular, very, very, very pricey. Most stuff we come across is price, pricey. <laughs> so we were pleasantly surprised when we were up in central Oregon, kind of in a more rural area, um, or it is a much more rural area than Southern California. It's not super rural. It's not farm necessarily. Were there any farms there? There may have been some farms, but it, there were a couple farms. There was an alpaca farm that we went to. That was really fun. That was awesome, actually. We've been there before. We went there last summer when we were up there too. My kids love the alpaca farm. Highly recommend the alpaca farm in Redmond. I believe it's in Redmond. It's in that area. Anyway, so different types of decor were, were more expensive up there. Kind of shabby chic farm, farm, what do they call it? Modern farmhouse, farm-ish. I, I'm gonna lose subscribers by saying this, but I call that decor style, um, burned up side of the road farm garbage. Sorry. And I say it jokingly, it's a joke. I just personally like mid-century modern better. So I kind of, talk crap on the farm look. Now I can appreciate, I appreciate really well done decor in any style, any style. I just don't like it when people take like a lovely mid-century modern cabinet, China Hutch, for example, and then destroy it with chalk paint. God, I've seen some horrible ones, so, so horrible ones where it really literally looks like it has been set on fire and someone is saying that they like upcycled it. I'm like, <laughs> you killed it. You set it on fire. You left it on the side of the road in the rain for a couple of weeks and now you're trying to sell it for twice the price. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> No thanks. Moving on from that. So to us, the prices were really good in comparison to uh, mid-century modern prices in Southern California. I can see how in other parts of the country where mid-century modern is not really hot right now, um, that kind of stuff is probably selling for really, really cheap, even cheaper than in Oregon. Because I know in Portland, which is a little hike from uh, where we were, mid-century modern is super hot. So it, there was kind of like, it was kind of like a, a melting pot of styles where we were in central Oregon. It was actually really nice. But yeah, if you live somewhere in the, like in the middle, that's usually where I, cause I browse prices for things in other parts of the country. If you live somewhere in the middle where mid-century modern is not super hot, let me know because someday we're gonna get to travel again and I wanna to go to those places. And I wanna to go to those places with my van and without my kids. And I wanna load up the van and I wanna bring all that stuff home. <laughs> anyway, moving on, we went to Goodwill. Now Goodwill was kinda of sketchy. I wasn't comfortable. I just wasn't comfortable in there. I'm very like, I don't know what to think, you know, about the whole virus thing. I don't wanna talk about it a lot. Everyone's been beat over the head with it. I know everyone is sick of it. I'm sick of it. I don't want to hear about it. But just in context of this trip, you know, we, I just wasn't super comfortable. The antique stores were very, very cool. There weren't a lot of people in there. There's maybe one or two other shoppers there at a time that we ever saw. Um, and then the employees, which was only a few people at the most. So the antique stores, we felt totally comfortable. The um, Goodwill was like a feeding frenzy and we had to wear a mask. They told us to stay six feet apart. No one was even close to six feet apart. People were reaching over, people were like shoving and pushing. And it, it was, I, uh, I just needed to get out of there. You know, I don't like crowded places anyway. I definitely don't like crowded places places during a pandemic. So <laughs> that's me. If you still are out there and doing it and you love it and you're being as safe as you can, that's you. You do you, I do me. 
I had to get out of there. <laughs> I got one thing at the Goodwill. I was just speed reading. I was trying to go to the aisles that there weren't a lot of people. One of those aisles, I did not film in there because it was just, that would have been way too much for me, way too chaotic. No. One of the aisles where there weren't a lot of people was the art aisle. So I flipped through some art before leaving the Goodwill and I got a big piece of art. I don't know why I got this. This was $5. Okay. So this is, I think, very, very old. Now, at first, this was looking definitely pre-mid-century to me. This was looking 20s or even turn of the century to me. My initial thought was this reminded me very much of some vintage hand-colored postcards. You can see it's like a Southwest kind of thing scene. There's cac cacti, cactuses, um, a little mountain, and it was black and white and it was hand colored. And then turn it around to the back. This was the thing that really sold me on it. I turned it over to look for the price and it was $10. You can see there on the little Goodwill sticker. It was $10, but it was half price. So it was five. Look at the old newspaper taped on the back. Hi, hi, can you see me still? I'm poking over here in the corner. There's this old newspaper taped to the back and it's about the place that the picture is at. The newspaper is pretty shredded, okay? But, so I was thinking this was 20s or turn of the century, but the newspaper has the date on the back and it actually says Arizona in wartime, 1942. And that's at the top. That's not the article that they're talking about. That's the top, that's the date on the newspaper itself. So this was at least framed in 1942, or at least the newspaper was slapped on the back in 1942. And there's this tiny little bit right here. There's a little pic, there was a picture right here in the article, whatever article this was about. See the date is way up here in the top. And underneath it, you can tell it's the scene. It's this like very similar, if not the same picture. And it was printed in the newspaper. And underneath it, it says Superstition Mountain near Phoenix, Arizona. So, oh, also this was framed in Fresno, California. You can see that in this little emblem down at the bottom. So there was a lot of good like hints and, you know, leads, I guess you would say on the back of this from that newspaper. So I looked up Superstition Mountain in Arizona near Phoenix and lo and behold, it's a real place, obviously. This is a photograph or a print from a photograph that's been hand colored. Actually, I'm sure the original one was probably hand colored and this is a like a print of a, a print. So I did some Googling and searching and on eBay, actually, I found this. And this is the exact same picture, there we go, exact same picture, exact same picture. Um, in postcard form, this one's just not colorized, you see. So I was kind of right when I said that this reminded me of this type of postcard. That's exactly, I guess, what it was. And Someone made a print out of it and sold it this way. Someone blew up a postcard maybe because they just really liked it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this piece of art, but I bought the postcard on eBay because I buy postcards. Anyway, talk about ephemera. Oh my God, I love, I love postcards. Vintage postcards are like the greatest, especially to me, especially when they're written on the back. And this one is written on the back. And look at how just lovely that handwriting is. That handwriting, the penmanship is just like beyond. That is exquisite penmanship. The postmark on this is from Phoenix, Arizona, which we know that Superstition Mountain is near Phoenix. And this was a father sending a postcard to his daughter and is postmarked January 30th, 1927. So 1942 is the date on the back of the framed picture. 1927 is the date on this postcard. And this, this date on this one makes more sense to me. 
Could it be that somebody had this framed picture already and later in life, they are flipping through the newspaper and they see an article and recognize the location. So they took the newspaper and taped it to the back of the picture that they already had from the 20s. Could be. The, the world may never know. <laughs> so I'm gonna read the back of this postcard real quick just because I'm obsessed with postcards and just old correspondence. I think it's sweet. So dear Margaret, this is a picture of Superstition Mountain near here. And it also is a good cloud effect. I'm starting out early tomorrow morning for a 200 mile auto trip with Mr. Richmond. Expect to see lots of desert scenery, lots of love, daddy. A 200 mile auto trip in 1927. Oh, and this was sent from Arizona. Daddy was in Arizona. Little Miss Margaret was in Belmont, Massachusetts. So why was he out in Arizona? Not sure. Um, <laughs> a good cloud effect. He liked the cloud effect. He expected to see a lot of desert. Yeah, 200 miles in pretty much any direction from Phoenix is gonna be a lot of desert. <laughs> That's just this little mystery of this picture. I, I'm i gonna keep, keep digging and see if I can find any more framed, blown up versions of these postcards. I've never seen one of those before. I don't know if that was a thing. I just need to do some more research on it and figure it out. All right, last thing. I'm already on the last thing. I got one, the second antique mall we went to, this was all in the same day, by the way. The third antique mall, the one that you just saw us go to, I didn't buy anything there, unfortunately. We almost bought those lamps. You saw us hemming and hawing over those lamps. Those lamps, <sighs> now that we're home, I wish I had bought those lamps. I really loved those lamps. The shades, the lamps, they really would have been great in our bedroom. The price was 175 for the pair. And for out here where we live, you could easily spend $175 on one lamp. I think I nearly have spent $175 on one MCM lamp. So yeah, a pair, a matching pair with perfect lampshades, perfect fiberglass shades. Yeah, kicking myself a little bit on that one. But we were also worried about transporting them home because we had a pretty loaded up van just driving out to Oregon, driving home, you know, after the shopping, it was loaded up even more. My son had a birthday while we were out there. We had lots of presents to bring home. We were just worried about them getting destroyed on the drive home. So that was ultimately the main reason why I said, we gotta just leave them. So the second antique mall we went to, that was also in Redmond. That one was the Farmer's Co-op and Antique Mall in Redmond. That antique store was massive. It was like every little twist and turn you took, there was another just loaded booth. I really enjoyed that place. Um, I really enjoy every place that I go, honestly. Not as much mid-century stuff necessarily at that one, but a ton of Pyrex. Like everyone had Pyrex in their booth at that place. I'm really surprised I didn't come home with at least one piece of Pyrex. You would think that I would have, but I didn't. Strangely enough, I didn't. I did, however, come home with this. And you can see kind of in the video, I actually had to edit a lot of it out, but you can kind of see in the video how I'm really like hemming and hawing over this thing. I don't know why. Maybe because it was $10. This was $10. It was marked down to $10. It was 20. And again, I had kind of like a resale hat on that day. If I was going in there with the mindset of just getting stuff for myself, I I wouldn't have even like glanced this over. I wouldn't even checked it for chips. It would have been in my cart like immediately. <laughs> oh, here's the funny thing too. This is the funny thing. You see this in, in the shopping video. It still has a Goodwill sticker on the bottom. <laughs> so this person got this for $3.99. Hopefully they got it on half price day. I hope they made more of a profit than $6 off of me. So this on the bottom, it says number 92 made in USA. This is like pottery, it's like a ceramic. 
it's that sort of satin smooth texture. It's got the little the little lid with the incredible shape. I mean, obviously the color drew me in, number one, this color. I mean, you know, you know, I don't even need to say it anymore. It's turquoise, it's turquoise. So the color drew me in, but the shape was like, mm, mm hmm like that shape. Now, as I've been researching this, all I have to go on is it's USA Pottery. That's all it says on the bottom. I wasn't coming up with a whole heck of a lot of results from that when I, as I was searching like eBay and Worth Point and stuff. So I did an image search. I took a picture of it just on a plain background and did an image search and I did find one. It had, I think a white lid. The handle was matched the body and it was like a pink speckled color. It had different markings on the bottom. It said California pottery and 1956 was the date on the bottom. So then I started searching for that. And, you know, going down the Google slash eBay rabbit hole, you know, that you go down to when you're researching something. And I found a picture of it, again, in a different color, I think, as a fondue. They're calling it a fondue or a crock or just a lidded casserole dish. Everyone's calling it something different, but it had a little metal bottom, a little base, a little stand and people were calling it a fondue. I don't know, I don't know. See, I'm talking about fondue again. Here we go talking about more fondue because I got those plates. I don't know that fondue was happening in 1956. Maybe it was, maybe it was. Maybe they were selling fondue pots in 1956. But to me, that feels more of like a 70s thing. I really just um, don't know. I would guess that it was probably a casserole with just a metal stand because there are plenty of casserole dishes that have a similar metal cradle stand under it. But the shape, I get why people would say it's a fondue pot because the shape of it looks, it does look like a fondue pot. It totally does. It's got that kind of triangle shape to it. I don't know, but it's mine now. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to sell this or keep it. The first step was obviously finding comps. And then ultimately I did. I did finally find this exact turquoise one and I saw it in a pair of two and the fondue came in a pair also. So it could have just been like a dual casserole. I don't know, but I've seen it sold anywhere from like in the teens to upwards of like $60, at least for a little while. It's gonna be living with me, being cherished for its turquoise beauty and lovely angles. All right, so that is a wrap. Shopped all day and I got one, two, three, four things. But it was just good to get back out there. It was kind of the inaugural return to the stores for us. And there's just a lot of browsing. So that was fine. Later in our trip, the videos that'll be coming up next, we drove over the mountain in Oregon and went to one or two, a couple, a couple antique malls in like the Eugene um, Springfield area. I, I believe that's where we were. So stay tuned for those videos because wow we wow did we get some crazy stuff. Oh, there's one more thing I wanna include here. Hold that thought. Okay, so here we are now in my office. And as you can see, we did get a lamp. Now, this is not the lamp from the shopping video. There is no shopping video to show this lamp because we bought this while we were up there on Facebook Marketplace. This lamp was, oh shoot, I can't remember now. Was it 10 or $20? I don't remember. It's these little like interlocking hearts. This is just to give you some scale. Here's my hand. I, I don't really have a very large hand. You know, it's, it's not very big, this lamp, but it's got a really tall lampshade. It's got the original fiberglass shade. It's got a really kind of ugly temperature light bulb in there right now. It's one of those really like, dark white. If there was a warmer bulb in there, it would look better. But this lamp was a little beat up. The leather rope at the top here was completely shredded. This is the original leather rope at the bottom. That one was in good condition. 
this one was completely falling off. So I was able to find, I'll turn this off so you can see the color again. I was able to find some of the leather rope on eBay. Again, score one for eBay and um, fixed it. I fixed it. It's got this like great green, like a dark forest green paint. It's the original fiberglass shade. Like I said, really nice ceramic, really good pull, still works. Oh, it's kind of dusty. It's already getting dusty in our house. Got to dust it. Um, it has one little chip on the base in the back, but I mean, where it is right now, you're never going to notice that, right? I actually did get one Nope, nope, two. Two other things off of Facebook Marketplace while we were up there. But those other two things that I got on Facebook Marketplace, you're not gonna get to see yet because they're Christmas things. And I am gonna be participating in Nesting Haven's Thriftmas in July. So I might as well plug that now. Those videos are gonna be uploaded on July 30th. And we're all gonna be uploading Christmas stuff. So I am hoarding all my Christmas stuff and keeping it from you for the next couple weeks. And the two things that I got off of Facebook Marketplace up in Oregon, well, they blow my socks right off. So hopefully, I, I'm hoping they're going to blow your socks off too. So please, please subscribe to my channel. It is free, free to subscribe. Click the notification bell. It alerts you when I post a new video. I would love the support. Thank you for watching my video. Hit the like button, leave me a comment. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me if you would have gotten those lamps at that antique mall in Bend. Regret. We only regret the things we don't buy. Let's be honest. All right, guys, stay tuned for more videos. I got some good ones coming up soon. Like I said, the next place we went in Oregon, I was not being picky anymore. I don't think I did have a reseller's hat on. I think I had a, I like this, I'm gonna buy it hat on. Cause I've got like three big shopping bags filled with stuff right now that I need to haul. First, I'm gonna post the shopping videos so you can shop along with me. Cause these stores were really, really good. All the antique stores we went to up in Oregon were fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Highly recommend go to those stores if you're up in that area, support the small businesses, stay safe, number one. Number one, please stay safe. Things are starting to get a little spiked out of control here again in Southern California. So we're not really going anywhere anymore. It's a little sad, but I have a feeling it's gonna kind of be a roller coaster for a while, you know? So hang in there, guys. Stay safe. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.